Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're here at Cornwall Gold and we're going to walk to the tree. We're here to continue our Cornwall on a Budget theme. The results of our poll this month suggested that you would be happy to spend somewhere between £10 and £25 per head for a day out. So let's see what Cornwall Gold has to offer. Cornwall Gold is about two miles from Patrith on the north coast of Cornwall. It's celebrating everything to do with tin streaming. So we're going to take a look in a bit more detail at tin milling. It was different to tin mining. They've got a new exhibition. We're going to take a look at that. And as part of our Cornwall on a Budget theme, everything here is a discretionary spend. So we think it fits perfectly with that theme. Our video is filmed in May 2023 and entry to Cornwall Gold is free. Everything you see in our video today we've paid for. This has not been gifted. So let's take a quick look at the parking. This is a car park, lovely big car park, and the bonus is it's free. Please check Cornwall Gold's website for opening times. When we filmed, the site shut its gates at four o'clock. Dog owners will be pleased to know that dogs are welcome on site. The new exhibition explains how the tin mill differed from a tin mine. Ore containing tin and other minerals was brought to this site to be processed. Bow maidens with hammers broke up the ore and then it went through Cornish stamps and was dressed, ready for the rest of the process. This is the new exhibition. It celebrates everything about Cornish tin streaming. You've got a shaking table. You've got how they actually got the minerals from here to there. And it explains it all. You've got some Cornish stamps down in the corner. You've, it, it's fantastic. There's notice boards that you can read and find out all the information. And this above me lays a, a plan of all the local mines in the area on the floor under your feet. Quite fascinating. If you visit Campbell and Red Roof area of Cornwall, this is what's under your feet. This oh. is a representation of all the mines in the area. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> there is, isn't there? And all of the lines, the horizontal lines, are where they dug out the ore. Wow, gosh. It's just brilliant. And my favourite is in the corner. We have a mock-up of what the mine would have been like, or the, the mill would have been like, in 1865. You've got an old wagon there on rails. It's just so good. The new exhibition also celebrates the role of women at the mill. Ore from local mines was brought here to be broken by hand by bow maidens. They used hammers to smash the rocks until they were small enough to go into the Cornish stamps. It's said bow maidens had muscles like men. Bow maiden. Oh, interview with Minnie Daniels. She was a Tolgus bow maiden. Press the button. Yes, I've done that. Paris Load of uh, stone, and then you have a long hilt thing around, of say. And, this is uh, a recording made of Minnie Daniels, who was a bow maiden here at Tolgus Tin. She was 102 when the interview was recorded, and she recalls the day spent here working as a bow maiden. And uh, break up these stones, and then after we'll do a, a lot of that, you know, we used to put it one side and then throw these stones was made for the roads. What did you wear? Because I suppose you were working oh, in the doors. We used to make a towser, what they used to call the towser, a apron up I get through it with a bit of string put around that. So you wear these hessian yes, towsers? Yeah, to towser. Towser. Tied around your waist and that there, well see that's to keep your coast clean. What do you think? Brilliant. How does it feel being a bow maiden? Well, I think I ought to go and get a hammer, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Muscles like a man. <laughs> have a smashing time. <laughs> There's a large cafe called the Cornish Pantry, offering breakfasts, light snacks and cakes. What have you gone for? Breakfast on a shovel, a big one. <laughs> <laughs> they do a gluten-free one. And you've gone for that? I have. Brilliant. 
<laughs> I'm really excited about this, like a child. <laughs> Should be great. Yeah. We first heard about this breakfast on a shovel, well we first saw it on the Instagram page for Cornwall Gold and ever since Andrew has hankered after one, so today's the day. <laughs> ah, that is so cool. Oh, I love it. Gluten-free breakfast. Oh, yum. So for my gluten-free, I've got hash brown, gluten-free bread, mushroom, fried egg, a bit of tomato, bacon, and hogs pudding. Mine's a small, yours mine's, is a large. Mine's a large, look at mine. Oh. I will, I'm coming, yeah, look. <laughs> so I've got some so, beans, yeah, I've got two rashes of bacon, too. I've got a couple of sausages there, hogs pudding, lovely, yeah, toast bread, hash browns, yeah. oh, mushrooms, fried tomato. And it didn't take long, did it? It looks great, and I've got a shovel to take home. <laughs> I'm gonna preempt the comments. What's that? Well, I'm gonna answer that question that people are gonna ask. What's the question? How tricky is it to eat off a shovel? <laughs> It's quite good, isn't it's, it? It's relatively easy, it isn't is, it? It is, isn't it? It doesn't slide around. It's lovely and warm. It's nice and hot, isn't it? You seem to be enjoying that, Sarah. <laughs> can't believe I'm eating off a shovel. It's a first for everything, isn't it? But it's delicious. Very good. There we go. Shoveling it in. <laughs> Last bite. Very, very nice. It was, wasn't it? Mm. Well. Right. I'm off. See you. One of the really unique, wonderful things about Cornwall Gold is that we have the old Tolgus Tin Streaming Works here as a museum and we're going to go in there now and show you all about how tin was extracted from the local stream, hence it was called Tin Streaming. The Tin Mill Museum is free admissions but donations are welcome. So this was the final process to extract those little tiny bits of tin that had managed to get into the waterways. So we're very close to Cambrai here where there was lots of underground mining and the water flows came here. There was a confluence of little streams that came to this point and it was really rich. The, the kind of silt was really rich in tin. So this is the final process where they extracted those last little bits of tin and it worked really well. Quite breezy today, I can't wait to get inside. Oh, it's dark. So, we have a quick map of the mill. So, we're here, and there's various things we can see a smelting shop, <sighs> slime pits. So, this is where the actual slime ran through these troughs, and the last bit of tin was extracted. And up here, shaking tables that was another method of extracting the tin from the slime the salty sea air would evaporate the moisture and the heavy tin particles would sink to the bottom of the slime children as young as 10 years old were employed to dig out the tin from the pits and this bit at the bottom, you've seen this? The average oh, no. life expectancy of a Cornish miner in 1865 when this opened <gasps> was just 29 years. 29? Yeah. So this shaking table would vibrate and the slime, the mixture of silt and water, shook its way across the table and the ore would sit against the can you see the lines? Shaking tables, as the name suggests, vibrated in such a way as to separate a variety of sands comprised of crushed rocks into three outcomes. The good stuff was heavy and stayed on the table. The waste was lightweight and rinsed off. The third kind was a middling version which might make the grade after further work. It's kind of special for me because I know that a member of my family, my Uncle Willie in the 1880s or whatever, he worked down here and he extracted tin from what was left, what was dripping out of the mines locally. Here we've got a set of Cornish stamps. So the cogs on that circular wheel, axle in the middle, would lift the black, I don't know if you can make it out, the black wooden rods, and they would come down with a full weight and crush stones of ore rocks and stuff like that until they were the right size to go through the rest of the process. 
Cornish stamps were, they were taken all over the world to do the same process until they were outdated when the Californian stamps took over. But that's a whole different story. These stamps at Tolgas are the last original working example in the world and are a listed monument. The lovely thing is that the tin that they can extract today is still used in the jewellery production here. <laughs> This is a carrot knot. Yeah. Inspired by Inspired the mouth. Inspired by the carrot knot. Yeah. So pretty. They're so delicate, aren't they? And again, they put the tin in as well. It's so pretty. There's a number of other little units here offering all sorts of lovely goodies. But all of that spend is discretionary, so you don't have to indulge only if you want to. What are you going to do? You've got a Spread it around. Right. Oh, I'm not doing very well, am I? What were you looking for? Gold. Yeah. Hold it. There we go. There we go. Ah. <gasps> yes. Yes. Look. Look. I've got some gold. Oh, hey, we're rich. Look at that. Look. It's got little bits. Oh, look. Look, look, look. Oh, you've got big bits. Yeah. Ooh, much better than some mine. Really big bit. And another really big bit. And another really big bit. Hey, got, look at me go! I got none. I think I should go out looking for gold. Look at that. Oh, look what you got. <laughs> look at my gold! <laughs> That's a bit of fun, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to put it all back in for the next person. Cover it all up. We've just got sand. Oh, if only I'd known. There's a little bags here that you can put your finds in and take them home. That is brilliant fun. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> Especially as I beat Andrew. Yay! <laughs> so after that breakfast we have got to walk that off. We're going to follow the tram trail from here to Patrice. It's about a couple of miles. So let's get going. After leaving Tolgas Tin, the trail joins the Coast to Coast Trail and that goes all the way to Patrice. At weekends it does get busy with bicycles, but I think it's wide enough. It's brilliant track. It takes you away from the road until you meet the very end of it to Patrice. So this walks about two miles down to Portree. It's going to be a there and back. I think we'll probably end the video when we're down in, in Portree. Yeah. Um, so I was doing some research last night, so I was going through our old books and I found a story about Portree that you don't know about and I think it will make you smile. Oh, look forward to that then. Let's get going. <laughs> and we're here at Portree. Tides in today, beach is quite small quite a swell because we've got that northerly coming straight on shore at us looking amazing offering food in Patrice. There's a couple of pubs, there's a Bassett Arms and there's a Patrice Arms. There's the Patrice Pasty Shop and there's fish and chips here on the harbour. There's also the waterfront and in the evenings the Chinese restaurant. Don't know if I'll cover them all. Anyway, you've got lots of choices what I'm saying. So if you didn't want an all-day breakfast you could get a snack or a meal here.
So we're here at Patrice Harbour. We are. Do you remember earlier I said I'd have a story for you that was going to make you chuckle? I do. Well, hopefully I will. Good. It's from this book. It's called Red Roof and Its People by Michael Tangy. Okay. It's from 1988. Lovely book. It's all about Red Roof and its people. Never. <laughs> so what have you got for me then? Right. Imagine the scene. 1872. Yes. You're sat here. This is about Portreef and the docks. Okay. Okay, and it goes like this. Visitors promenading the quay in Portreef complained very greatly. And the attractiveness of this favourite little watering place is much marred by such improper proceedings. Oh. It was strictly forbidden in the old times. What? Respectively dressed men and women were watching the antics of a perfectly nude man in the water. <gasps> no! And they seemed to enjoy it immensely, especially when he floated on his back. There we go. Do you like that? So that's the story about Portreef nude bathing. Very good, I do like go. that. I must have a look a minute, hang on. <laughs> No, just a seagull. Hum. <laughs> Did make me chuckle though. Well done, Andrew. <laughs> 10 out of 10. You like that? Yeah. That's a lovely old book. This one's got loads of old pictures in it. Um, not of the nude bathing man though. <laughs> that's, that's not in it. Oh, look at these. Yeah. Oh, look. Is that a Sunday school treat? Yeah. Oh, look at them in there. Sunday best, aren't they? How many on that wagon? Gosh. So our Cornwall on a budget theme. How much did we spend at Cornwall Gold? Well, we've spent um, thirteen pound per person. Oh, what? Well, and so that we... was for the breakfast and the coffee. Yes. Yeah. So cool. And in a minute, we're going to go and have a pint. That sounds like a good idea. Or an ice cream. Oh, pint or ice cream. <laughs> We did ice cream at Coverax, there's got to be a pint here. Oh, okay, well that's going to tip it over the £15 per person, isn't it? Oh, okay, we'll have a half. But there is a discretionary spend, and there was a, obviously there's a, a, a donation that we put into towards the mill, yes, wasn't there? True. And there was a donation towards doing the panning. Yes. Yes, look, look, I've got some gold. Oh, hey, we're rich. Look at that. <laughs> so, you know, we're looking probably under £20 Yes, yeah, so un under £20 per head, and we've had a lovely day out. And that relates back to our survey that you guys helped us with a few weeks ago, where we asked you, what do you expect to expect? to spend on a budget day out so this really qualifies you get some you get parking you get food breakfast on a shovel a big one <laughs> <laughs> and you get an activity it's been brilliant for me what do you think yeah I've had a lovely day it's a great walk actually learned a lot as well by looking at that yeah. exhibition at uh, Cornwall Gold they've done a really good job with that yeah I really enjoyed that and it's a celebration of our Cornish heritage absolutely and my, my arms being nuzzled here <laughs> like, you got a doggy? I have hello hello gorgeous <laughs> So, as the camera wobbles, it's because of dog. <laughs> so I think we're going to leave it here, aren't we? And we're going to walk back to the car now. Yeah, if you've got any other ideas for days out in Cornwall on a budget, yeah. put it in the comments. Yeah, that's discretionary spend, donation parking, that sort of thing. Let's spread the word and keep Cornwall on a budget. Yeah, and if you've enjoyed this video today, give us a thumbs up. It does help with the algorithm. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. It's free on YouTube. So we're off now to get pint. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Cheers, time. Cheers. Well, after reading this book, I'm glad I'm not a bow maiden. Cheers. <laughs>